Hey class, welcome to the Creating Broken Line Graphs tutorial. Why do I want to teach you how to make a broken line graph? Well, broken line graphs are great visuals to see how data changes over time. If there's a trend, it's easy to see. So the people at the Weather Network, when they're trying to give you a forecast over 14 days, you'll probably see them use a broken line graph because it's an easy way to tell you. If I want to get the forecast over 14 days, instead of telling you Monday it's going to be 13 degrees, Tuesday is going to be 15 degrees, they'll probably just show you on this broken line graph. You can just see the line, and if the line's going upwards, you can tell it's getting warmer, or if the line's going downwards, then you can tell it's getting colder. So it's a great visual to be able to understand information easier. So I'm putting up the steps and the word problem at the same time, because I am short on time on this screencast here, and I'm putting in the chart. So you can read the, the steps and the uh, word problem to, to understand the information, but I'm going to paste in my uh, T table, my T chart. The chart I always like to use before I create a broken line graph, it helps me organize my information. So what I would do is I would just go in into my uh, pull out the information from my word problem and start this T table. On the left side I would include the time, the period of time that I want to talk about. In this case, it's days. It could be months or years or weeks. And then go one, two, three, four, five. And then find the data in there that changes. So the data that changes is the amount of shots sunk. So on the first day, he sunk seven. On the second day, he sunk 11. And I would just start filling this out. I like to do that because now I don't have to keep on looking in my word problem. I could just yank it out from this T table right here. So now that I have that, I'm going to actually start to go through the steps of creating this. And I'm going to create my left my x and y axis. The x axis is the axis that goes at the bottom. It's the one that goes across. So the x is the one that goes across, like an x. And the y axis is the one that goes from the bottom to the top. I like to think of it as the one that goes up all the way up. The y goes up to the sky. Y up to the sky. So after I do that, I'm going to label each axis. So I have to tell you what each axis is going to talk about. In this case, the bottom axis, the bottom axis, the x-axis, is always going to talk about the amount of time. In this case, it's days in our word problem. It could be talking about, some problems might be talking about weeks or months or years, but ours just happens to be talking about days. On the y-axis, it's the data that changes over time. And the data that changes on each day is the amount of shot, shots sunk. So the number of shots sunk. And now I can start to put things into my graph. So I'm going to include a scale that shows my interval. What I mean by that is it goes up a certain amount every single line. Okay? I'm going to indicate that on my scale. But I don't want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because if I look at my data, he sunk seven shots. And that's way more than six already. Well, it's one more. So I don't want to go count up by one, my intervals being one. I want to go up by maybe something like five, so it will all fit in. So if I go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, then I take a look. The most shots I have to graph is 21, and that fits in, so that's perfect. For the days, it's a lot easier because I notice that it just goes up by one every time. So it's just one, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm just going to need to plot my data. So day one, I look at my t-table again. Day one, he shot, sunk seven shots. So day one, seven. So just above five. Day two, I go straight up past 10 to 11. Day three, all the way up to 13. Day four, all the way up past 15 to 17, and day 5 all the way up past 20 to 21. So I connect, I plotted my data, and now I'm going to just going to connect my plots using a ruler. Uh, the tablet is hard to use a ruler, so I'm just going to freehand this. And I write in my title, and I'm short on time, so I'm just going to throw the title in. It's an appropriate title. It explains everything. It's the amount of shots sunk by Nick in one minute. Quickly before it ends, I'm going to talk to you about the trend here. I notice that the trend, the line, is going upwards. So that's great because I can tell that Nick's getting better from day one to day five. Michael Jordan, maybe. 